Christie's favorite song. Page free, free, free. Get a songbook and sing with us. Are you ready? All right. Stand up and let's get ready and sing. It is good to see you. Good to be in the Lord's house. And them kids are still going there. Lola's got money. <laughs> she heard her name. Page 333. You got it, boys? There you go. All right. Sing it right now. Oh, so that morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I fly away. Sing it. Come for this evening's tithes and offering. You give us the Lord's blessing. Things will be taken care of. I'm so glad. I might have sprung this. All the family I've been washed in the front and cleansed by his blood. Join in with Jesus as we travel. I'm part of the family. Sing it one more time. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Cause I've been washed. Somebody singing good.
Jeff and Stephanie here, and we're going to ask Jeff to come up, Them and Stephanie's going to sing us a couple songs, and he's going to preach for us, so you uh, give him a round of applause tonight and get behind him as he preaches. This is my uh, comfort zone to stand over by my wife and sing. I promise you, she sounds a lot better than me. So. <laughs>
good, and um, yeah. I'm thankful for this place. Yeah. I'm thankful that he brought us here, yeah. and I'm, yeah. I'm thankful God that you guys have made us feel so welcome. Yes, and I love his spirit. I love yeah. being among yeah. his people, and right. I just I feel like you guys have just wrapped your arms around Praise us. God. And um, Thank I'm thankful, and I just wanted to know how much I appreciate his love and how much I appreciate all of you. said it's good to have Jeff here tonight. We'll have Kevin, you're going to sing the invitation tonight, so just be ready. Uh, but it's good to have Jeff with us tonight. He's a great preacher. Uh, love this man. And uh, he's, our, he's our assistant moderator of the state. You'll see him Friday night if you come. So uh, you pray for him. Make him welcome as he preaches for us this evening. Honored and uh, very thankful uh, to be able to stand tonight and to, uh, to bring you uh, God's word, what the Lord has given to me. I've had some of you in the congregation reach out to me uh, and, and remind me that it is Super Bowl Sunday. I'm, I'm aware that it's Super Bowl Sunday. I'm also aware of who gets the victory tonight. I promise you. <clears throat> Joshua chapter uh, 10 beginning at verse 16. Uh, verse 16 through 27 we'll read from. A uh, portion of scripture, in all honesty, that, that as I looked at it, I'm not certain that I would ordinarily see a message in it, but I'm so thankful for how God works, that he speaks to us, that he brings to us the, uh, the things that we can't see. I see some asking around. So Joshua chapter 10, verse 16 is where we'll begin to read from. 10 and 16 says, 
But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Makeda. And it was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hid in a cave at Makeda. And Joshua said, Roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave, and set men by it for to keep them. And stay ye not, but pursue after your enemies, and smite the hindmost of them, suffer them not to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God hath delivered them into your hand. And it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of the slaying of them with a very great slaughter till they were consumed that the rest which remained of them entered into fenced cities. And all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Makeda in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then said Joshua, open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. And they did so. And brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Laish, the king of Eglon. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel, and said unto the captains of the men of war which went with him, Come near, put your feet upon the necks of those kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed, be strong and of good courage. For thus shall the Lord do all to all your enemies against whom you fight. Uh, uh, let me stop there long enough to say it jumped out at me as I was looking at this. This is the same words that God gave to Joshua as Joshua took leadership and began to lead them into the promised land. And what I would say to us is if Joshua felt they were good enough to say to the nation of Israel, then I promise you on God's authority tonight it's okay for us to say to each other, be, of, be strong and of good courage. Hallelujah. Verse 26, and we're almost done. It says, And afterward Joshua smote them and slew them and hanged them on five trees. And they were hanging upon the trees until the evening. And it came to pass at the time of going down of the sun that Joshua commanded, and they took them down out off the trees and cast them into the cave wherein they had been hid and laid great stones in the cave's mouth, which remain until this very day. What, a, what an interesting portion of scripture. I hope as you hear that tonight, you're like me and you think, I, I want to see where Jeff goes with this. Well, I'd, I'd like to see where the Lord's going to lead us to. But, but I, I want to point out to you that uh, as we study the nation of Israel and as we see this, another preacher recently said this, they, they don't stand behind them a walker. It's the only exercise I get. So just be prepared. But um, as... as uh, they, they, uh, we read this story and we see this then. The nation of Israel was given the command, I mentioned it before, to Joshua, and, and they were, he was told that they were to take the land, the land of promise being given. Basically, to, he said to him, everywhere that your feet trod, everywhere that you step is the land of promise, and God promises to deliver it. Well, if we'll remember the battles that have happened prior to this, they've been much more by God's design and by his plan. Uh, the, the Joshua in the, in the battle of Jericho, for example, they were just simply to walk around and when the Lord said shout that he'd bring the walls down and he did so. Even the nation of Ai, as, as they fought against them, will remember that it was somewhat by trickery that they uh, showed a portion of the host of Israel and then as, as the men of Ai charged out, the balance of the force came in and destroyed the city behind them and so it's come to the point, why I bring this up is the Lord said it's time for you to fight. Well, boy, the Lord will solve our problems, but there is a time when it's time for us to fight. And I promise you that time comes and the Lord speaks clearly. But he said to Joshua and he told him, he said, there are kings in the north and there are kings in the south. And a battlefield has been drawn and you must clear these kings that are there that are standing in the way of, of what is the promised land of Israel. And so we see part of the battle ensues and what's left out ahead of us is a portion of scripture we're more familiar with where the Lord actually stops time or has time stand still in the battle and we see that. I want us to see the strength of this message revolves around the five kings. Now these kings thinking they were safe, if you'll read it in advance of this, head into the cave and try to hide there. Where we picked up in the story, we see that the news comes to them and Joshua's made aware that these five kings are hiding in that cave. Rather than confront them, and I don't intend to recap all of it, I want you to see something with me, if you'll stay with me, that he rolls stones just to contain them. He says, let's take care of the rest of the battle, let's go into fight, and we see that within the battle they utterly destroy the enemy. Now at some point in time, Joshua returns to where these kings are. And it's his instruction as he has the stone 
rolled back and sends his soldiers, his men of war, in to get these five kings. Well, remember that he brings them out. And I love the verse where it talks about it. In fact, Ron uh, uh, responded to it, but he responds to a lot now. I, I noticed that. <laughs> but in verse 24, he says, Come near and put your feet upon the necks of the king." Now, now that not only sounds cruel, and, and it is, it was symbolic. If someone's uh, foot is on your neck, well, uh, I'm just teasing. Uh, <laughs> there is no way in that position that it can be interpreted as anything other than surrender. And, and you notice that as he does that then, and as he publicly humiliates these five kings that are there, that, that he says to them then the promise of God, Fear not, be not dismayed, be strong and of good courage. Now, Joshua had those kings killed, and he hung them on a tree. And at the going down of the sun, at the end of the day, by Jewish law, they were removed from those trees, they were placed in the cave, and Joshua commanded stones be rolled in front of the door. And look what it says. I even emphasized it as I read it. Which remain until this very day. Now, I know of a great and mighty king that was publicly humiliated and made to shame. I know that this great and mighty king in front of many was put to scorn and to the world it appeared as though he had utterly surrendered it all as from the tree that he hung on, just like these five, he announced and said, it is finished. Now, our Savior, the King of Kings that hung on that cross, was also removed as was custom, and his body prepared, and he was placed inside. How many of you all got this before I started? Come on. And he was placed inside the tomb. And by man's decree, a stone was rolled and was placed at the door. Now I'm not going to give any of us today something that's brand new to them. But if you go to the cave where Jesus was laid, that tomb is empty today. That stone has been rolled back, not by man's power, but by God to let man see inside and realize once and for all that the King of Kings is not there. Hallelujah. That's good preaching. Let's... Let's go get some nachos, right? <laughs> I want to ask the question, and I don't want to scare you, but I'm still not really into my message yet. I want to ask the question tonight. Why did Jesus not stay in the tomb? Or better still, why did the five kings stay in the tomb? I'll give you the answer. The five kings were absolutely guilty of the sins that they committed. As God came into the land and said, this is the land of promise, they stood in the way. Not only they organized themselves and tried to fight against the Israelites, guilty of standing in God's way. Hoy, they were condemned and they were, they were rightfully killed and placed into the cave. And that's why they stay there today. But our Savior, who went into the tomb, wasn't guilty of one thing. He wasn't. Instead, into that tomb, he carried my sins. And he brought my sins inside of the tomb. And so there today, he's not there because he's not guilty. Because those sins don't belong on him. They belonged on me, but he took them on him. Hallelujah. I want you to see this evening this thing, and we'll be done. I want to look because... The preacher in me, and see we're guilty of doing this, when we want to look at it, here, here's where, I, where the Lord sent me with this message. As strong and powerful as that is, and that's, that's a message in and of itself, I want us to realize that the Lord took on the sin of those five kings for us too. That the reason they're still there is they didn't give their sins to God. I did through His Son. Yes. And, and so the preacher in me wanted to think of words, because we're guilty of doing this, we say, well, there's five things. I'm going to think of five things that, become, that start with the same letter, right? That's how we preach, isn't it? Preacher 101, they tell us that. Yeah. Well, it's the fear, it's the faithlessness, it's the... No. And I'm telling you, I struggle with this. 
for a long time looking at this message until the other day he showed me. If you still have your Bibles open, I'm not going to make you have to refer to it, but I want you to see something in verse 3 of the same chapter that we're in. Oh, I hear pages turning. I like that. In verse 3, the kings of these five areas are called specifically by name. Now, sitting at work the other day, because when I should be working is when I do my best studying. I'm just, I'm just telling you. <laughs> uh, looking at that, the Lord spoke so clearly to me and said, I, I wonder, instead of five things that begin with T or five that begin with P or five that begin with F or whatever would say man, I wonder what their names meant in the original Hebrew text. It tells us number one is Jerusalem's king, Adonzek. And that simply means the Lord of justice or of right. And I want us to think that in the cave today is this king because Christ took on my unrighteousness for me. He's captivated this king and he's rolled the stone in front of the door. And, and it didn't matter if what I thought was right. You, you see, if you were like I was this way, then my righteousness, with Christ tells me, is as filthy rags. I didn't worry as much about what I did wrong. I worried if I could find enough wrong in you to make me feel better about me. I, I mean, that, that, that's how it was. I, like I'd be able to stand on that dreadful day of judgment before the Lord and, and simply say, I, I know my sins are great, but His were worse. Let me, okay, His... Let me in to the joys of the Lord. And, and we realize that's not how that works. No, no. We have to come to the conclusion and the awareness that, that what we have, what we present to God is not perfect in ourselves. But we're made perfect today because he's locked my unrighteousness behind a stone and there it sits today. I don't have to carry the unrighteousness that I have because my Savior locked that king of unrighteousness in the cave, and I don't have to worry about it anymore. You know, I, I, was, I was thinking about this. If you and I went together on a camping trip, and if I forgot to bring a, a, a canteen along with me, just imagine with me, and we're traveling along together, and I look over, and, and you do too, and you see in a ditch it looks like a container, and you say, well, I may have found your canteen. And you go over there and you pick up this metal container, pour out, it appears some stuff's in it. And when you turn it around, it's got a skull and crossbones on, on the side of the container. And it says poison written across the bottom. And you say, oh, no, you know, that with desperate times, I mean, you're going to be thirsty unless I've got this canteen. And you take it back to the camp and there's a stream that's there. And you run it inside the water, of uh, the cool water of the stream for a minute. And you fill it up and you say, here you are, good as gold, should be great. How many of us would drink out of that? Yeah, but he washed it out. It doesn't matter what we show coming out of us if the very nature of us is spoiled and poisoned. If we contain unrighteousness today, if we've not allowed him to lock that away and do that, then it doesn't matter how much you wash it in front of other people to try and make it look good. It's still unclean inside. Hallelujah. He locked the king of Jerusalem in the cave. Number two is, is Hebron, the king of Hebron, or Hoham is the name. And that word means to impel, or to force, or to urge. And, and I remember being lost in the world, and I remember the things that urged me, that forced me, that impelled me. It's, it's nothing of, of pride, but I, but I know that the hold for myself that alcohol had on me on one, at one time in my life. I remember how drugs used to control my actions and what I would do. And I'm not too proud to stand in front of you today because I am not that man. I can remember going down the grocery aisle and it seemed like Satan would just send me that way. My wife would want me to pick up something and lo and behold it would be down the aisle that the beer was on. And I used to walk down it after I'm saved and Satan would do his very best to cry out and say, There they are, just pick one up. And I'm proud to say today that I didn't pick that up because God locked that king inside the cave. The stone's still there. Hallelujah. But I, I want us to realize that even for the redeemed today, we still fight with urges. Well, we do. I've searched God's word 
and I'm still looking for the scripture that talks about the holy two by four. I mean, sometimes, right, Will? We would love to search in there and find it where it says it and be able to say, Lord, thou shalt take the holy two by four and buffet him upside the head until senseless. Roll thine holy sleeves back on your arm and go and smack him bald-headed. Apologies to anybody. No. But do you see what I mean? We want to do that with righteous indignation. But the urges that we had, those things that would impel us, instead of showing hatred, instead of showing those things to other people, God's changed who I am. I'm just going to love you instead. I'm thankful for not a holy two by four, but the Holy Ghost that has changed me. I'm now much more inclined to pray, much more inclined to care, to love, and to live for Him. I want to tell you all about a story, and I think it would match up well. How many of us remember Brother uh, Dr. David Gibbs preaching during the uh, camp meeting? He, he preached a message on love. Do you remember this? And it was so profound, Will. It was such a, was such a I mean, all of the services were good. I'm kind of like Ron. I'm, I'm not going to pick one at all. They're all good. But I, but I want you to see that that message came, and, and the whole thing was on love and on loving. And my wife and I went out, and we were in the, uh, where the products were being sold by the different gospel groups. And we were standing around talking to uh, 11th Hour. And a man and his wife came up and went to the table and hollered to uh, my wife Stephanie and I. And we turned, and... Uh, he said to Stephanie, he said, hey, you're, you're that one that sang because you put us up, if you remember, to sing that night. Yeah. And uh, she said, yes, I did. And he said, oh, you have the beautiful voice. I thought, wow, that's, that's nice. That's unsolicited. You know, that, that's good. And he turned to me right after that. This is a true, true story. <laughs> and he turned to me right after that and he said, you, not so much. Now, the urge in me, the impelling and desire in me, I'm just being honest with you. Lord, where's that holy two by four? It's right here, isn't it? I'm ready. You know what I said to him? I love you. That's exactly what I said. And it was all right. Number three tonight, the king of Jarmuth, Piram by name. Now, this one's easy for a preacher. His name translated means running wild. Wow. I, I know that this has been buried in my life. My, my wants and my desires, thank God, are so different today. But God still helps temper us all for this in our lives. Truly, the, the lows that we get to in life should not be so low that, that, that we, we run away from God. I, I, if I, every person that I've heard say to me and say, I'm so depressed, I'm, I'm so down, I'm so defeated, I'm so discouraged, and the first option for them is not to charge to the house of God, but they tell you, they say, I'm not going to church because I'm all those things. I don't know about you, but I need to desperately be in church when I'm all those things. It's the only thing that can cure me. It's the only thing that can, can be peace for my, for my soul. But there are others, too, that, that uh, it, 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 and it's the other side of the seesaw. They'll say, I'm too angry. I, I'm, I'm, too, I'm too agitated. This one didn't shake my hand, or this one didn't say that, or somebody told me my wife sang good, and I didn't. And, and so then they, they, they say... You know who you are. There's going to be an altar call later on, I'm just saying. But, but they, they were, able, were able to find peace in all of those things. We don't have to run and let the emotions control us like they did before we got saved. Trapped in that, in that cave today is, is this king. And so I don't have to be the emotional swing that was there. And you say, well, Jeff, is that possible? And absolutely it's possible. We're no, no longer a creature to our emotions, to our passions, but we are to a Savior that loves us. And it is our responsibility to show that same love to others. The fourth king today is King Lashish. Jophia is the name. And that word means to shine forth. But listen, it means to show yourself forth. You know, this, this is a problem if you're lost tonight. If you, don't, if you don't know the Lord tonight and you've not let him put these kings behind the cave and rolled the stone in the way and you've not let this king be buried, then you're going to struggle here. You see, the world tells us that if you don't look out for yourself, who will? Uh, 
There's time standing, right? You, you know what my fear was this week? It, it wasn't to stand here because I trust the Lord. I thought maybe you all would call for a recount or a revote about the membership thing after, <laughs> after I was done. Just get with Will and say, change your mind. But I, I, uh, I just thought about this, that instead of how the world would have us do and how self should be more important, if we all would just get a hold of the reality that Christ must increase and that we must decrease. I mean this when I say this to you. I'm not a preacher of any note. I'm not. I'm not anyone that should be glorified that way. And you probably, you're probably, it's probably apparent after this message. But I will tell you what I am. I'll tell you that I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'll tell you that I am his paper boy. And that for whatever reason, he's assigned me a route, so to speak. And he's prepared the message and he's wrapped it up. And he'll call my name and, and assign me every so often to, to go and to deliver what saith the Lord. And I pray that I do it in such a way that you don't see me and see the flaws of me. But I pray instead that you see the Savior through me. I pray that what I say, that what I do, how his spirit would move through me would appeal to your soul. And you'd have a yearning and a desire to make sure that everything is right in your life. He must increase, and I must decrease. You know, we sing that song sometimes uh, in church that, that talks about, I'm in the way, the glory land, bright and shine away, get in the glory land way. Some of us are in that way, and some of us are just plain in the way. I mean, I, I'm just telling you, the Lord wants to move, He wants to work, and, and we posture or put ourselves where people see more of us and don't see Him. God help us that, that, that we would get in the way of what saith the Lord. L listen, if I sit in front of you in church, you'll have a clear understanding of getting in the way because you, can, you can't see through me. But Chris, right, we'll, we'll get together and sit in front of you one time and you can see. If you can see through us, good luck. But do you see what I'm saying? That we can't be in the way of what saith the Lord. Self can't be more important than that. You being advanced, you being recognized, you being given tribute, he must increase. I must decrease. And lastly tonight, Eglon is the last king. Debir is his name. And that word means to speak or to declare. Literally, it means to threaten. If we're a redeemed child of God here tonight, then we should speak differently. I don't, I don't talk like I used to. Not, the word, not just the words that I say, but, but how I would say them or anything that I would say. It's never our place as Christians to belittle to, to wrangle, but instead it is to encourage, to love, and to remind others. You know, I, I want to I tell you this story, and I, I read a, a meme on social media the other day that talked about this, that if you are the, the child of a, of a preacher, then you're fully aware that everything that you've ever done in your life is likely to be mentioned from the stand. So my son is not here tonight, so he's getting picked on. When my son was in middle school, his name's Jordan. When Jordan was in middle school, uh, he was difficult to deal with. Now, my father-in-law, Stephanie's dad, is a, a preacher in, in the Free Will Baptist Conference. Uh, a lot of you know Richard Garrett. My father-in-law is Marty Garrett, his yeah. brother. Yeah. And uh, Marty, good man of God, someone much more, uh, I don't know, low-key and calm, especially compared to me, but that's not hard. And uh, my son was out of control, and... I, I had come to the point, and again, he's, he's 26 years of age, so this is a number of years ago. I'm thankful to tell you that the Lord's made a difference in him. He's not who he was because I'm not who I was either, I promise you that. But I want you to see this, that, that uh, my son, uh, crazy, and, and I asked my father-in-law, one of the, again, one of the most godly men that I know, calm men that I know, I said, will you go in there and talk to my son? And he said, I will do it. He said, I'll go in there and you pray that the Lord speaks to him. And they went in. I'm telling you, I thought, this is it. I just brought out the heavy hitter. I'm going to have him go in there. He's going to take care of it. Where I'm volatile and, 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 and wild. I mean, he's controlled and, and he's seasoned. And he goes in there to him and, and talks to him. I don't know what he said. But I'll never forget this. He walks out of his room and he looks at me and he says, that boy is crazy and he needs boot camp. <laughs> All right. Uh, that, that seemed to work out good. But I struggled with what to say to him. Yeah. 
Now, now again, I, I wanted to, to just, you know, take a hold of them and, and do this or do that to them. And I prayed so desperately, Will. I said, Lord, what would you have me to say? What could I say to him to impact him? What could I say to him that would change him? And, and the Lord brought me in his word and brought me to the, the story that's contained within there after Solomon's death. Uh, with Rehoboam and Jeroboam. And, and we'll remember that, that, he, that, that one comes to the other and, and he says to him, he says, uh, you know, your father made it grievous on us and, and we've got a request of you. Will you make the taxes lighter? Will you reduce these things on us? Will you make our load less? And I'm hoping you know the story because I am giving you the cliff note version. But, but I want you to see then that, that after they leave, he says, give me some days, give me three days and all the side. And so he does and immediately goes, and I've always thought about this. Yeah. His father was Solomon, yeah. yet he confers with men that Solomon kept on staff for him as, as uh, advisors of wisdom. Yeah. And so I thought, how wise must these men be yeah. if they advise the man that, that, yeah. that the Bible calls yeah. one of the wisest that's right. ever lived? And so he goes to them and they say, no, no, your father made it hard on them. King, as, as king, if you'll make it easier, this will happen and that will happen. And, and we'll remember it again. I know I'm, I'm ramrodding through the story. But I, but I want us to see that the second group of people that he went to was all of his friends. Do you remember this? And you remember when he goes to his friends and he, and he asks them, he says, what should I do? And, and in essence, they say to him, they say, well, if you thought it was bad under dad, wait till you see it now. And their encouragement or words to him was make it twice as bad. Yeah. Make it twice as hard as it was. And we'll remember that he followed the advice of his friends. Now, the Lord showed me that story. And I remember the Lord saying to me, I want you to go into your son. I want you to sit that, that crazy kid down. And I want you to tell them this story. Read it out of God's word. And I did. And the Lord showed up on my living room couch. And he allowed me to point out that he had had men of God like myself, like my father-in-law, wise men that trusted in the Lord. And they had given their advice. But he had chose to follow the advice of his friends. And I told them what happened because the nation of Israel at that point splits. Right. Well, remember that two tribes go and the, and the, and the right. northern tribes go away from that. And the repercussions of that is, is the captivity that they have to endure. And all of that set into motion when he could have listened to somebody wise, somebody that trusts the Lord, and he didn't do it. And I bring that story up to you to tell you this, that we have the ability as Christians to turn to his word. And to allow God to speak to us. And we don't have to respond and we don't have to threaten and we don't have to be who we used to be. God's changes today and I'm thankful for that. I want to close tonight by saying this. We've given a wonderful list I think today and, I, and I'm so thankful for how God revealed that to me. How he showed me where to go with it. Not, not think of words that I could have substituted in but instead to point out the literal names of those kings. But the good news I want to bring to us tonight is this. If you don't know him, if he's not locked those away for you, if you struggle with any of those things that I've read here tonight and gone over under God's influence, he can lock those away for you tonight. You can leave here tonight changed and strengthened by the God that is not guilty of any sin but instead willing to take our sin. Even greater still, saint of God here tonight, what are you struggling with? Because so many times we listen to a message and we think, I'm thankful that he did all those things, but I, I've got fear in my life. We say, we say, he's hit on those, and boy, those bless me, and I'd never looked at that like that, but I have this financial obligation that's weighing over me. Not things that necessarily are... are uh, Issues that separate us from, from the favor of God or separate us from, from being in his will, but things that separate us from the joy that God has in store for us. What I'm happy to tell us tonight is this. He's still able to put whatever shows itself in your life as king inside the tomb and seal it away because he alone has victory over the grave here tonight. Will you get a song, brother? Amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Just stand together. You're here tonight. You have a need in your life. 
maybe a burden that you're carrying, maybe you're struggling in your walk with the Lord, heads are bowed, eyes are closed, no one's looking around, you just be honest tonight and there's, there's a need in your life and you want to be remembered in prayer, would you just slip up your hand by that same, pray for me, bless all the hands this evening, I have a need tonight, God knows what it is, bless those hands, maybe you're here tonight and as Jeff said, it, you, it's a Sunday night but you've never put your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your sins are still on you, they're not put away in a cave, they're not uh, thrown away as Jesus uh, went to the cross for those. And you're lost and you're away from the Lord. And you just be honest tonight. Heads are bowed. No one's looking around. You've never been saved. You've never put your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If that's you tonight, would you just slip up your hand so we can pray for you? are not going to embarrass you. just want to pray for you tonight. Would there be one? Bless that hand. Any others? I've never put my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Would there be others? We're going to have a word of prayer. If any need to come and pray, the altars are always open. Lord, thank you tonight. Thank you for Jeff and Stephanie. Thank you for the message. Lord, I pray if there are any that need to uh, come tonight, those who raise their hands, those uh, maybe who are unsaved, that they would respond, God, to uh, Lord, your Holy Spirit and come. We give this time over to you. Have your way in every heart and life. For it's in Jesus' name. Amen. As Kevin sings, if you need to come and pray, uh, these altars are open. I am just a little lamb struggling on my way. And just like all the others, sometimes I go astray. I've searched for green pastures oh but they're so hard to find and the more I try to lead myself the more I fall behind now the valleys are full of sorrow and there's danger everywhere But when I'm close to the shepherd Oh, I never have a care And sometimes I get so thirsty But the water is safe I'm still Oh, but when he leads me To the calm, cool water He lets me drink my fill Oh, and at the shepherd's side I will have no fear This life starts to bother me. He anoints my head with oil. He has to make me lie down sometimes just to rest from the journey's toll. And when I get afraid, to walk through those snares 
Just keep my eyes on the shepherd Because he's already been this way Oh, and at the shepherd's side I will have no fear for Enjoy the message tonight. Give Brother Jeff a hand. Great job. Great job. I have a few announcements. I'm going to ask him and Stephanie actually to go out in the vestibule before we dismiss. Well, they can go on now and they'll be out there. Make sure you get by. Uh, this Friday and Saturday, we are hosting conference. In fact, Jeff will be leading Friday night uh, and, and Kevin Pope will be preaching. Uh, and Saturday, Chris Rollins will be preaching. Uh, and so if you, you are interested in coming, we'd love to have you. It starts at 730 on Friday night. And at 10 o'clock is around the, the business session. We usually start church around 10, 45, 11. We're feeding after both of those services. So uh, since we're hosting, uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Yeah, we need volunteers to help cook and, and clean. If you have questions, uh, please see Miss Linda Euler. Her number's on the sign-up sheet uh, as well. Uh, next week, uh, next Sunday, uh, we will be having a, a Korean dinner uh, in the morning after the morning service. Uh, that evening, uh, the Jim Brady Trio will be here to sing for us. And after that, uh, we're going to have a quick meeting for those going to Israel. And But we're also going to the cafeteria for a wedding reception for Matt and Jody Schloss. All right? Uh, so just remember all that. Any other announcements before 16th, we dismiss? Uh, in two weeks, 